Welcome to the Good News Radio broadcast. Hello, this is Brenda Harris greeting you in the precious name of Jesus. Before Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. I had a dream that I believe represents the rapture and the beginning of the Great Tribulation. I will share the dream with you and its interpretation. It was a gorgeous day. The sun was shining so brightly. My sister and I were happily chattering as we walked along. We were walking towards this huge, nice building located on a campus. The lawns were very well manicured. The campus was massive. There were many other people walking towards the building as well. All of a sudden we heard a loud explosion. There was a commotion of some sort behind us. We turned around to see what was happening. We saw many, many soldiers walking quickly toward us. They walked on past us toward the building. I became very concerned. I asked my sister where we could go to hide. One of the soldiers at the tail end of the march heard me. He turned around to answer my question. His face was filled with mirth. He was laughing. He pointed toward the east and said, You can go through the forest to that building on the far side. There's a building located on the other side of the fence. He said many people go there. My sister and I took off towards the forest. I could still hear the soldier laughing. We began walking in the forest, and very soon I looked down at the ground. I saw this huge, gigantic bear paw. It was about the size of a vehicle. Amazed, I stood looking at it. Then I heard a noise over to my left, like a rustling in the bushes. I spied a huge bear standing upright about 15 feet from where I was located. I wanted to run, but knew I could not get away from him. I stood rooted to the spot. The bear was sniffing the air, looking this way and that. He looked all around, but wonder of wonders, he did not see me. I was amazed that he couldn't see me. I wondered why, but decided we'd better get out of there. My sister and I kept walking through the forest towards the east. We had a time getting to the fence, but we finally made it. It took quite some effort to get over the fence, but we finally made it over the fence. We saw a building close to the fence. The roof was above the ground, but the rest of the building was below the ground. When we entered the building, a very nice lady greeted us. It was her job to show us around. At this point, my sister disappeared. I never saw her again. I was taken to a basement-type room that was very long and rectangular. The lady left me. You could feel the moisture in the air of that room. The room was dank and musty. I looked over to my right and saw this glass partition with beautiful green flowing water behind it. I peered intently at the water. I knew instinctively that there was something wrong with it. It was contaminated somehow. After a while, I climbed a ladder to go to the other part of the building where the people were located. The same nice lady greeted me again. She took me to a room that housed many women. The ladies were packed in that room like sardines. The room reminded me of army barracks. I was allowed to see what was taking place. I myself was not detained in any way. The women were putting on makeup and straightening their belongings. They were talking and trying to be normal and happy as if nothing bad had really happened. They were making do with what they had because they had been told that living there was only temporary. I felt great pity for them. I knew this situation was not temporary. People believed the lie because they wanted to believe it. This was their way of coping with disaster. I walked on outside. No one stopped me. Several feet from the building I saw a woman lying on the ground. I almost thought she was dead at first. But then I heard her moan and make a little movement. I realized that she was in deep distress. She was in grief. 
I walked towards her to help her. I instinctively knew there was nothing I could say to comfort her. All I could do was stand there and stare at her. She was wearing centuries-old clothes. The skirt was down to her feet. She had on some type of bonnet. Her apron was a different color than the rest of her clothes. The lady from the building came out to assist the lady that was lying on the ground. I walked on towards the forest on the north side of the building. I encountered three people in the forest almost immediately, a woman and two men. The woman smiled, and one of the men spoke to me. I knew his words were very important, but his words were hidden from me. I don't know what he said. Then a huge feeling of joy swelled up on the inside of my being. I declared three times, I made it, I made it, I made it. They all smiled, and we walked on together towards the sun. Now I would like to share the interpretation of the dream. My sister and I represent the church. The campus represents our nation. People will be living life as usual. When least expected, a major catastrophe will happen. The catastrophe will require soldiers to take over. The nice soldier who told me about the building was laughing because he knew there was really no place to hide. The government will know about all the hiding places. The bear and the bear paw represent Russia. Russia will be sniffing around to figure out how to invade our land or take over. They will want dominion over our nation. The bear's nose was sniffing around. He was looking for prey. God protected me and my sister. The bear could not see us. It took a while to get through the woods. The church might have to go through some trouble before the rapture takes place. We had a little trouble getting over the fence. Obstacles will present themselves against the church, but the church will prevail. When my sister and I climbed the fence and entered the building, a nice lady greeted us. My sister disappeared. I believe this represents the rapture of the church. God allowed me to see the beginning of the Great Tribulation. The church had been raptured, but God allowed me to see what was going on. The nice lady led me around the building to show me what it was like. I was not a prisoner. I had perfect freedom. I believe the roof of the building above the ground means that the government will know about the hiding place. The building being below ground means that the people will think they are safe and hidden. The beautiful green flowing water means that it will look perfectly normal, but there will be something wrong with it. The water will be contaminated. People will be living in some type of camp. People will be fed lies in order to keep peace. People will believe the lies because they will not want to face reality. The alternative would be too horrible to contemplate. The lady in deep distress represents the church that was left behind. The old clothes show how old the church is. We know it is old, but the church is still here. Jesus spoke of the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. The foolish virgins were not living right. They professed Christianity, but was not living a sin-free life. The foolish virgin will understand like no other what happened. She will be in untold grief because Christ had returned and then left her behind. She will know that in order to make it to heaven, she will have to suffer through the great trouble of the great tribulation and give her life as a testimony for Christ. Christ tells us plainly in the book of Revelation that he is coming after a spotless, sin-free bride. We must be ready. The three people in the forest represents the percentage of people that will make it to heaven when Jesus returns. Jesus said that there will be few that make it to life everlasting. Broad is the gate that leads to destruction, and many are they that find it. Narrow is the way that leads to life everlasting. A very small percentage will actually be ready to go when the rapture takes place. You may ask, when will the rapture take place? I don't know and neither does anyone else. But we can look at the times and seasons and know that we are closer than we may think. Jesus spoke of his generation when he was on this earth as the last days. So you know that the time we live in is even a lot closer. 
Regardless of when it's going to happen, we need to be ready at any given moment. Our lives could be taken at any moment. We could get sick or be in some kind of accident. We just need to make sure that our souls are right with God at all times. In reference to the man who spoke to me at the end of my dream, it reminds me of a Bible verse that I really like, and that is found in Daniel 12 and 4, which says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. This may have been God's way of assuring me that the dream was from Him. God knows how much I like this Bible verse, and also that verse was referring to the end times. Luke 21.36 says, Pray that you will be accounted worthy to escape the things that are coming upon the earth and to be able to stand before the Son of Man. If you have not accepted Christ, today is the day of salvation. Pray to Jesus, Lord, save my soul, and He will. Then follow Him. And now this concludes the message today. Again, this is Brenda Harris blessing you in Christ's name. May God's face shine upon you and show you His great favor.